Welcome to the 5 8, where we discuss each of the week's five most fucked up topics for eight minutes each. Five topics, eight minutes, two hosts, one guest, singing, a little dancing. Actually, there's no dancing. A lot of swearing and as many cocktails as we deem necessary. LB, how are you? Greg Elliott, I'm doing really well. How are you? How is you know, how's it going? Look at our drinks. If there is ever a week to have a Manhattan, oh, this is the week to have the Manhattan. This is it. Cheers. Cheers clink. to you, Alvin Bragg, our Manhattan dia. Yeah. Clink, clink, Donald. Clink, mm. clink. You know, I think we're all, I can speak for everybody here. I think everybody watching, everybody at home, we are thrilled. We are delighted because justice has finally been done. The, the law and order has returned. The thing, the legal Twitter is abuzz with this thing that everybody has been talking about all week. And we're going to spend most of the show discussing it. I'm talking, of course, about Gwyneth Paltrow's ski trial. Oh, yeah. So happy for her that uh, that she won. Yeah. Settled for a dollar. <laughs> Settled for a dollar because it was never about the money. It was just about just I think I was a loon. But anyway. OK, goop lady. <laughs> I knew, no I'm, I'm proud to say I knew nothing about that at all. There's no time for her. I don't have time for her. All right. I'm not interested. Okay. Okay. Um, here we go. I want to wait, set the timer. Wait, wait, wait. Don't set it yet. couple quick things up front. A uh, 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 couple uh, quick things. A couple uh, uh, quick things. Okay. There is no after show this week. No after show. No after hours, whatever. Uh, after hours this week. We, we're coming back in two weeks. We'll have an after hours at that time. But tonight, no after hours. Um. I apologize for messing up the XL and the LX. I keep flipping it around. For some reason, I want the show to be an, uh, an automobile and not um, a Roman numeral. So, you know, good on you guys for. Well, and, and subscribe and join at, so that you can have an XL automobile. That would be nice. Not that we'll ever get there, <laughs> but it would be nice. All right, everybody. Can I set the clock now? You can set the can clock. Dive now. in. I want to get to our in. guest for sure. All right, here okay. we go. Greg, where were you when they heard the news? Um, I was taking a nap on my patio and I checked my email when I woke up and I got a um, an email from the New York Times telling me that Donald Trump had been indicted. I didn't even find out on Twitter, for God's sake. I found out the old fashioned way from an email from the New York Times. Oh, okay. Well, and, <laughs> and then you, you called me. I did. And I was on the phone. Yes, you were. And I wasn't watching TV and I wasn't on Twitter. Yep. And then, so our lives have changed a bit since 2017. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time doing this. And then you called me again and I was like, something must be going on. And, uh, and then we, he's indicted and we're like, ah, oh, he's indicted. It's, it's, I think a happy, mo uh, sort of like, oh, good. It was sort of more of a, okay, this thing is on. It's the democracy. It's working. Um, you know, it's good to see that because I was pretty, I wasn't hopeful about Bragg. But I mm -hmm. thought he was just waiting and waiting and waiting for someone to go first so he could stand behind them and like, you know, just add himself onto somebody else's being the, the what are those ships called? The icebreakers, right? Yeah. But um, in the Arctic. But kudos to him. He did it. And now New York, I don't know. Have you talked to anybody in the city? Like, are they? No, I will say my, my friend Jessica did say that that Bragg was OK and. Yeah, Bragg seems did. to be okay. So okay, you know. all right. Maybe Jessica um, knew. Maybe she knew. She, she, she knew. Uh, so let's talk about this journey a little bit from 2017 to yesterday or Wednesday, okay. whenever it was. Yeah. yeah, I've lost all track of time. Me too. Time it's is a flat a circle. Time. Yeah. So this is what we came to expose: that this man is a criminal. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't even know each other. We wouldn't right. have this YouTube show that we in, with this great community and know anybody in this community if we hadn't both independently gone, he's a criminal. Mm -hmm. We know he's a criminal and we need to let people know that he's a criminal. Yep. So your big thing was, I mean, you were on Twitter, but your big thing was Dirty Rubles, yeah? Yeah. I had been writing thing. a column yeah. before that for my site that nobody read. And uh, I kind of cobbled together some of those columns and and wrote more stuff and put out dirty rubles in may of 2018 which was uh you know a year before muller and the idea of it was just to kind of very quickly summarize what was going on and what trump russia quote unquote was yeah. so if somebody was like well tell me about this instead of explaining it just like, here read this 
you can read it in an afternoon and then you'll understand what's happening. And, um, you know, I, I should put out a new edition because I'm going to have to I'm going to have to make changes. Like when I say like Paul Manafort is almost certainly guilty, I could just cross out the almost certainly. Now. Yeah. And just put the indictments up there. Yeah. Speaking of indictments, have we seen the indictments yet? No. Have they have they? OK, no, now, I, had a, I had a guess before the numbers were being floated around. I'm like, I think it's going to be into the 30s. I think we're going to have in, accounts that are into the 30s because kind of reading the tea leaves, which we try not to do. I haven't done since, you know, my first thing was Sitjourno, which was we worked on that for a year. I worked on that with uh, Lou New and another researcher, Jay McKenzie, and put that out in, I think we got it out in like October of 2017. Yeah. Um, we started, uh, so it might've been like eight, nine months of work. Uh, it was a tremendous amount of work to pull together the hist Donald's history at, at, with open source research in organized crime. Um, and what had the world that had forged this very strange creature that he is um, and why he had the power that he had and the propulsion behind him to get into office without any accountability all of these years. And then you and I circled back around and really answered that question, which I see now people are speculating about. When was that? When did we do our Tinker Taylor mobster trap? At least three years ago. I mean, it was a while ago. I think yeah. it was 2019. Yeah, I think so too. I think that was 2019 because it was before I had a, I used a face or a voice. No, it's 2020. It was 2020 because I I didn't launch I didn't go on Substack until 2019, until November of 2019. So it had to be 2020. Okay, well I was still pretty anonymous. I think wasn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, no, you didn't want to come yeah, out. It was okay. very yeah, 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 because I I'd been getting threats. <laughs> it mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't good, and I had been getting them from the other sort of big news, which we'll get to a little bit later, uh, from the. Uh, what was called then the alt right, all those horrible players yeah. um, that were that actually also helped put Donald into the into the White House and through and now we have election interference crimes from that specific uh, event yeah. being prosecuted in a guilty verdict today. So the first one of those, which is just amazing. I'm so thrilled. I, I just it's been a long, 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 long journey. And with for us in particular, and here we are with the first of many indictments. And I, there were promises of sealed indictments back in 2017. I don't know if anybody re remembers that. Yep. So, you know, which was all a bunch of horse shit. But here we are. Yeah. yeah. Some real ones. What do you think about Michael Cohen? That My it's the Stormy Daniels, Michael Cohen. I mean, know? I think it remains to be seen how much of the indictment is that and how much is something, you know, I, I, my understanding is that it's going to be business like tax stuff, but I think there's some sort of, um, you know, karmic thing there where, you know, Trump fucked him yeah. over and he shouldn't have, yeah. you know, and, uh, there, there's definitely, I, I would think some sort of revenge thing in play. And, um, you know, it, it's interesting that everything has come full circle. I'll say that with, with him. Um, the thing that the, the one point that I, kind of want to make the thing that i've been thinking about and the reason why like we want him to be indicted even if this isn't like the greatest you know jack smith comes down with the documents that's the the thunderbolt right but even if this doesn't wind up being that he's now under indictment and he's going to have a trial probably and uh unless he you know does a plea bargain right and anytime that's in play you might go to jail yeah so you know, just like anytime you're the major candidate, if you're one of the two big party candidates for president, you might become president. If you're under indictment, you may go to jail. Yeah. So Trump is now, you know, all his life he's avoided this. And now it is a very real possibility looming before him in a way that it never has been before. My guess is that I, I know he's fundraising off this and all this, but at the end of the day, he must be a little bit scared that this is going to wind up with him in the old Huskow. Um, as has been, you know, uh, drawn in countless drawings that we've shared on Twitter through the years. But um, this is the closest we're, we're, we've gotten to it so far. And if it's true, and Arthur, thanks for, for uh, sharing that, if there are going to be 34 counts of fraud, that's not nothing. That's, that's not a nothing. lot of shit. There might be a little bit of racketeering. We'll see. Pecker going in there and then followed mm. up by Weisselberg. There, there's... This, yeah. and this was a racket, and and I don't know if it begins and ends with the one thing with Stormy. I will say, however, I do like that this ended up going first. I don't think it has the same kind of teeth as the classified documents, but maybe it does, as the election interference, as all the other stuff that Jack 
uh, uh, Smith is into, and we'll get into that next, next, next segment, but that it was, this is about how disgusting this man is with women. Yeah. This is about his lies about women. This is about that he cheated. He cheated with a woman. He cheated on his wife with a woman and then cheated to get into office by paying that all, trying to get rid of all of that. That yeah. was a cheat to get into office. That's what that was. He's a liar and a cheater. He, whether it's lying about the alleged assaults, lying about the alleged rapes, it's just a lying about what lock her up. Mm -hmm. He came in hot attacking women and it's a woman and how he handled her is going to take him down. So, or at least it's the thing that broke the ice. So yep. I'm salute. Yep. To us, to us, to, to us and to you and everyone watching. I think, uh, we're going into the second segment now. Yeah. We're going in the second segment, starting the starting the start the clock. Um, yeah, we wanted to start the second segment. I think with uh, there, there's been some talk, some chatter um, on the old social media by the uh, the killjoys of legal Twitter or whoever, being like, "This is a terrible thing for America. This is not something to celebrate." And um, I would just like to say, "Fuck you." Yes, it is. Fuck you. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. One more. It is a thing to celebrate. I will drink to that. Yeah. Um, I so think it, celebrate because it's not a test of our democracy, as they all keep saying. The test of our democracy was the years that we've been dealing with this fucking criminal that, without any accountability, rising to the highest office in the land and committing crimes. He crimed it coming in. That's what this is about. He crimed while he was in there. That's what the impeachment was about and all other kinds of things. We'll go through them. And he crimed on his way out. That's yep. what the election interference on January 6th. And then he crimed sitting in his fucking mar-a-lago as an ex-president with the classified documents he's a criminal we've been saying this from day this is why i am here because i knew he was a criminal not a racist not a sex yes all those other is not just his politics or whatever they are not just a horrible human being no it was very specific to him being a criminal a criminal. And I think that this is what we'll get to our guest. There was so much gaslighting since the Clinton presidency, quite frankly, about from the right about the corruption and criminal presidents. Oh, Clinton's a criminal. And then Obama just showed up and it was like, he must be a criminal. Holy God, their heads exploded, right? <laughs> Created a whole fucking stupid ass party right? You know, tea party thing, just, just to try to have a context, like give us some language for our racism. That's not about racism. Oh my God. But 24 seven, he's a criminal. He's a criminal. He's a criminal. And Donald Trump playing a big part in that at the early years of Obama with, he's not even born here. He's committing a crime to get into office. He's like lying about his birth certificate, all of this shit, right? So when people like us, come forward in 2016 and then to 2017 and consistently and persistently for the years that he occupied that office and beyond saying he's a criminal. We all, we sound to the, to the pundits and to the people paying attention. We sound like it's just a political, Oh, it's just cause it's their guy in now. And so of mm -hmm. course you think he's a criminal because when your guy was in, it's like, no, I, I don't have a guy. I, I don't have a guy. I have a lady justice. Yeah. That's why I have a woman. And she says, he's a fucking criminal. And so here he is, a criminal. So that's beyond indicated. <laughs> indicated. I just like to say, I, I also did the typo, uh, you know, in, in the piece that I wrote. This was one of the yeah. paragraphs I wrote indicated instead of indicted. And it doesn't come up in the spell check. And, uh, you know, I, I do say I, I of all the bo boneheaded things that he's yeah. done. I think that's probably the least offensive for, to the English <laughs> language. I mean, um, yeah, but, you know, it's uh, I, 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 I remember it this way, Donald. Um, you know, you, you put the dick and indicted. That's that's how it goes. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> this case, this really this is the first thing. It, it, this, the first thing that he's being held accountable for, indicted for the first crime, sets of crimes are the crimes that he committed getting into office. Just have everybody remember this. This is not about 
oh, he had an affair or he paid. It's not. No, this was a crime committed in order to achieve the office of the presidency. Otherwise, his 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 presidency, in his opinion, this would have ruined it. So he committed a crime to make sure that the people did not know anything about him. That was a crime. He interfered in the election. It was like, that's what that is. Same as Mr. Meme Lord, right, that got, got guilty today. You cannot commit a crime to get into office. You just can't. No. And you're, you're getting into, you're illegit illegitimately getting in there. Let's remember the other crimes he committed to getting into office that we found out from both the special counsel report from volume two. And was it volume two was obstruction of justice and volume one? Which one was election? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Volume yeah. one is Russia. Volume one is Russia, right? Collusion, accepting, you know, interfering, all of this stuff. Watch, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. We're going to learn. We've got some guilty verdicts already. With the I was told oh. there was no collusion. Oh, I was told there's no collusion. And the Senate Intel report confirmed all that, right? Yeah. Confirmed that- Bipartisan. There were Bipartisan. Bipartisan. Marco Intel. Rubio, right? Because Richard Burt was, and then they got rid of him. They he signed like, off on it, but then Rubio yeah. went and tried to Bill Barr it and tried to make he it. Tried to Bill like Barr it, but he, he still what signed a, it. <laughs> fucking tried to Bill Barr it on Twitter. Disgraceful, yeah. traitorous little weasel. Can't stand that guy. All right. Oh, awful. Then, okay, so he committed all these crimes to get in. So that's what he's, the Pied Piper, the Piper has come for him for the smallest mm -hmm. one of those because the big mother daddy of those Bill Barr fucked it and screwed it all up. And Pelosi, I'm sorry, she didn't have the wherewithal. She just did it. She didn't think people would understand it. The hearings were a little bit messy with with uh, Mueller. Jerry Nadler kind of fucked all that shit up. So they just it just was like it's too confusing. Well, we'll wait. So what were the crimes in office? Well, that, that was the impeachment. Yeah, he committed crimes. He bribed a foreign leader. Tried to bribe a foreign leader to again interfere in an upcoming election here yeah. for him so that he could get into office more criming this isn't you know this whole argument of like a president can't commit crimes because they're acting in the best faith of what they think they sh are doing right for the country so you can't get them on war crimes you can't get them bullshit yeah right that's what the impeachment's for well we know what happened there but that doesn't mean those weren't crimes then there was the emoluments, constant criming around the emoluments the entire way through. The, the hotel. How many people stayed in that hotel? Holy shit. Emoluments Avenue. Yeah. Right. Then we had uh, the extraction of justice with mm -hmm. Comey, firing Comey to stop an investigation into him and then obstructing the special counsel from being able to get any information around all that, which fucked up, you know, any kind of resolution. Then we have Khashoggi. Oh, yeah. Duty to warn. He didn't warn. Didn't warn. Yeah. He did congratulate, but he did not warn. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. And then how about the bounties on the soldiers' heads? Yeah, he didn't care about that. That doesn't seem like something that a commander of chief is doing in good faith to their oath of the Constitution. No, that sounds like a crime. Hmm. That sounds like a crime. But what do I know? Pandemic grifting and intentional infliction of harm and mass murder. That seems to me to do everything you can to make sure you kill as many Americans, hopefully thinking it's going to all be in blue states as possible, doesn't seem to me to be upholding one's oath of the Constitution. No. The first job of the president is to provide for the common defense and keep us safe. So yeah. that's a So again, this failure. isn't politics. This isn't politics. This is crime. Mm -hmm. Very different. Yes. We're not just calling him a criminal because we don't like the way he handled things. He committed crimes. And then the fake fucking pardons. I'm sorry. The corrupt pardons. That might have been on the way out. So here, yeah. are the, here are the crimes on the way out of office, right? We have the election crimes. That's Jack. Jack Smith coming with that. Um, the fake electors in Georgia interference. Oh, we got Fanny from Atlanta coming in for Georgia, coming in that. The corrupt pardons. I don't know if anybody's going to investigate that whatsoever. And I think that will land on Jared Kushner's head, hopefully, if they do. We've got January 6th. Oh, I forgot about. Did that. you forget about the insurrection? Yeah. Yeah, that seems. There strange. are so many crimes that we skipped the insurrection. We skipped the insurrection. And then, of course, the classified documents and espionage. The man's yeah. a criminal. So this is not a test of our democracy. This is the validation of our democracy. Anytime you see anybody saying, 
this is a test of our democracy. No, the test was the was the last seven years. Yes. This is the validation of our democracy. That's the word I want everyone to take out. All right. All right. We're doing good on time. Good. Flying through this. It's good. Flying through it. Good. good. Um, is it already time for karaoke? I think it's time for a little singing. I think it's time for a little karaoke. Indictments dropping and they ain't done. I fought the law and the law won. I fought the law and the law won. They'll arrest Ivanka and my fail son. I fought the law and the law won. I fought the law and the law won. wanted to rhyme it with uh inver mech done but i couldn't i couldn't fit it into it, it, the... it work. listen there's yeah. a guy on here and i'm sorry mr michael dominic uh true player kick him out i didn't mean i was trying to do it with my uh with my abilities my uh i think i think i think she did yeah get him out of there out. all right get out you know You're that's, out. What we do, that's what we do to the i want i want to shout out to weiselberger on uh on twitter oh. that twitter account because i ripped off that that graphic from from that excellent twitter account that people should go follow oh okay um, yeah i don't know that i follow that all right it's it's just at weiselberger yeah yeah okay we'll you know do that. We, yeah we can't say i don't know if we'll we can do say. that i don't know it's not me um oh good okay now uh it's time for our guest right yes it is we have anything else to discuss? We don't. Okay. Um, everybody, usually this is a surprise, but we already announced it, so which which is great. Um, she's all over social media. She's got great, uh, she's got a YouTube channel. She's got great uh, TikTok videos that, that sum up Fox Ooh. News. She watches Tucker Carlson, so we don't have to, from Media Matters for America, Kat Abu Ghazale. How are you? Hi, Hi guys. How are you doing? It's wonderful to see you. Thank you for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. Um, so did everyone kind of get that? So really what you do, if you could sum up kind of, what is your day like, Kat? Yeah, so I and my team, we watch Fox primetime. So like four to 11 is just watching Fox News and uh, looking at all the crazy bullshit they say. Okay, and, and so, Hey, do you have a good therapist? Is there good? Is it how, how do you like your therapist? Do you, can we? I, have I mean, I don't have a therapist right now. I'm doing pretty great, honestly. Yeah, you are okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to hear all about how they're reacting to this news, but also anything you might want to say to preface what it's like to do that job. And Greg, you had something, and then and I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, where were you when you heard the news? That and you got where were you when you heard the news? Yeah. I was watching the five on Fox News. Uh, that's that's where I was, and then I watched them like immediately want to break down. It was amazing. I thought Jesse Waters was going to start crying, um, and then there were the gasps, and that was amazing. Uh, yeah, so that that's where I was, and it's been fun. Um, I just checked on Tucker, and he is talking about the indictment. But first off, he brought the um, Douglas D Douglas Mackey case, and. Uh, He's just, I don't think he knows where to go because we all know that Tucker passionately hates Donald Trump. So yeah. everything he says is. Yeah. Like, and, it, has there, and there's no not been an acknowledgement of that. Did he address that at all? Does he just avoid all of that? We don't watch him. Oh, so, like if he, if the Dominion case? Yeah. 
and yeah, no the, one is talking about the Dominion case, not at all. That's if you only watch Fox News, you would have no idea that it even existed. I actually had someone in my replies that was talking about um, the Tucker text, and then some MAGA person was like, "That's not true. Where did you find that?" The person was like, "Google it," and he went, "You're using Google as a source," which was just very funny to me. But oh um, peer to Google, oh, well. it's worse than I thought. Yeah. yeah um, it's so okay, so you you provided you put together and cut a little video of the reactions to the that the, these Fox News people had. Yes, so I thought no, we'd play no, that and then we, we come back and and you can discuss. Okay. Oh yeah, let's do it. Well, this is this is courtesy you. Okay, here we go. Democrats are branding Trump as a criminal. It's legally pathetic. It's clickbait. It is an unbelievable abuse of justice. Pure balderdash. My heart is broken. I had some tears yeah. in my eyes. Looking a little emotional. I feel the same way. If there's a mugshot of Donald Trump, it'll be in dorm rooms and on T-shirts. He is an OG. Even if convicted, that's not going to stop him. Donald Trump could run in part on saying, I'm going to pardon myself and go after uh, the deep state. Uh, it's not open for debate that we live in a police state. It's like Stalin's purges. We're crossing the Rubicon here. This is a political Rubicon that has been crossed. They have crossed the Rubicon. Basically, it's one party hunting another. It almost feels like they're pushing the population to react. It is a war on conservatism and MAGA. They want you to strike out. People better be careful. And that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Balderdash. 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 Great word. To be fair, balderdash is a severely underused word. It, it is. is. I, I, oh my God. What, who said they have crossed the Rubicon? Everyone, everyone said that. I would that? like them Excellent. to point out where the Rubicon is. Yeah. I would really love for them to do that. Yeah. And when and what what century? Yeah, give me the context here. Just, just yeah. a little bit like vague history class, middle school answers. Come on. I yeah. don't. Th I don't think they know the difference between that and a Rubik's cube. So they, they don't. I think we just put the Rubik's cube. They cross the Rubik's cube. cube. That's right. They Rubicon is the a nightclub in New York City, I believe. <laughs> and then I, I also want the dorm room posters and the T-shirts. I hadn't had an idea to do merch with that, but we better get on that, Greg. We're gonna have. Oh, to Cla that Quad night. is already. It, it's already. It's just <laughs> be so much. It reminds me of the, there's that episode of The Simpsons. I think I've talked about this before, where Bart and Martin Prince are running for president and Martin Prince is hanging up a sign that says a vote for Bart is a vote for anarchy. And then it pans down the hallway and Bart is hanging up the exact same sign. <laughs> so I, I think it was uh Philip Kowski wrote like, you know, everyone's going to be wearing the mugshot and you're not going to be able to tell what side they're on. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited about that. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait for the merch. So for what you do every day and watching this, could you, did it seem like it was a surprise to them? Did they, is it, there's so much performance art going on there. So I, give us your feel on like where they, how this hit them, you know, cause we've talked about how it hit us, but how did it hit them? Yeah. So when you have big breaking news, usually it's something horrible, like a school shooting or, you know, a terrorist attack, whatever. Every once in a while you get something really good that just pisses them off. And they don't know how to respond, but they have to respond immediately because we have a 24 hour news cycle. Mm -hmm. And so they're just stuck processing it in real time. It was the same thing with like January 6th and like tear gassing protesters at Lafayette Square. They had no idea what to do. And so you just had all of these super inconsistent messages, even like in their own shows as someone was talking. Dan Bongino came on and was like, we live in a police state. And he spent the last three years talking about how Democrats defunded the police and Blue Lives Matter. Um, yeah, so they're, yeah. you know, some of them don't like Trump. I mean, you have like Tucker, who is defending Trump, even though he doesn't like him. And then you have some people who really, really, really love Trump like Kennedy and I think it feels like a part of his soul got indicted too oh, he, he put no. his identity they fused their identity with him and so it's like to and what is interesting is I'm seeing interesting comments here Kat I think you brought some interesting folks into our show oh, yeah. uh, in the comments how fun we never have this so this is good we'll take care of them um, what's interesting to me about it is how quickly they then get consistent. So there's got to be some hint of a message around this or how they're going to frame it. It's not like it's hit them out of the blue. 
Donald Trump himself was saying, I'm going to be arrested, indicted on Tuesday, even though he got the date wrong. He was right about the event. Surely their his lawyers are always in contact with all the, you know, shills there. They, they do coordinate. We know that. I think it wasn't Sean Hannity individual three in this very case. Was it, it two? Must- yeah. Two. I- two? Mm-hmm. Number two. Oh, he was number two. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big deal. He's a big deal. Well, he was he was right. Michael Cohen's client, right? Hannity? Yeah, yeah I think or, I think that Hannity, when he talks about it on his radio show, he's like, he wasn't my like I wasn't his client, but we knew each other. And like, you know, he's like a lawyer friend. Um, also, can I just say that I love how Michael Cohen is just like a messy bitch who loves drama and has made everything miserable for these people. Like, honestly, just problematic king. We love to see it. Um, yeah, he, he had me. It's interesting. He had me blocked for years, and then because um, I was exposing, you know, the organized crime roots behind his this whole racket that he's been he was involved yeah. with. Come in, right? Because his it doesn't matter. But we'll get to it later. But um, so he blocked me, right? Because I was like, ah. And now, now that this is going down, he unblocked me. <laughs> <laughs> so like, he wants to hear what I have to say about all this. So, I have to say, wait, messy bitch who loves drama might be the greatest description of him that i've heard anyway. yeah it, it applies perfectly to michael cohen he's a messy bitch who loves drama he like he didn't it. have to do any of this he's choosing to do it because he's a messy bitch who loves drama yeah and they came they came after him you know they, yeah they did. They, they did come after him so what do you think the messaging is going to be how are they going to frame this um yeah, so for the they, audience they'll get it together yeah they'll get it together also sorry my wife is like on a delay um, the thing is you had like a bunch of different narratives last night. So you had, this is bad. They're politicizing, you know, the justice system and the state justice system. You had, uh, that Alvin Bragg is like soft on crime, but hard on Trump. Uh, you also had people saying that this will help Trump. And then you had people saying this would hurt Trump. They have to kind of consolidate all of this. And then you also had the messaging that was pretty violent that was saying, you know, officer she made me hit her you know saying they want us to do this they're provoking us so it's just a matter of hosts finding their own voice sometimes you'll have one host say something and then the next show like tucker and hannity they'll say the exact opposite thing like in ukraine tucker will talk about how we should be helping putin and then you'll have hannity say we should nuke mother russia um and so it's it's probably going to be like that for the primetime shows but overall i'm interested to see if they go the mug like the mug shot is super cool super gangster way or if they go the you know this is a travesty way i i don't know yet i'm sure it'll be a mix of the two hasn't that but have they has fox pushed pulled away from trump yet because it seems like rupert murdoch was wanting to do that but no, people keep saying that and he's it, they're not pulling away from trump yeah they're like tiptoeing the line and then after the dominion filings like tucker for the last year would say trump no matter what you think of him blah 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 um to kind of play into the DeSantis crowd and the Trump crowd but now he has to really suck up to Trump to make up for the damage he did mm. and Trump could ruin any of their careers in a second if he wanted to with just yeah. like a horrible nickname and I think they all know that he has you know a bomb that he can set off at any time and he doesn't care who comes with him so no Fox isn't you know pulling away from Trump um no that he will that always be, with him he'll he always be a hero victim He'll always be hero victim. Exactly. So that's the inconsistency in the message, whether, oh my God, he's so gangster, it's cool. And they're like, oh, he's poor Donald, he's a victim, you know. Um, but whether he's gonna ever be the bad guy, I I don't think so. Yeah, I don't no. think I don't know how they would even um rationalize that. People, no. are, so, people are so radicalized. Yeah. Um, okay. We wanted to ask too about um now Friday night, you're usually watching Tucker at this time. Yes. Um and you you said before we came on that Friday Tucker is a very specific kind of Tucker. So for those of us who couldn't tell Friday Tucker from, you know, day off Tucker, um, tell us what you mean by that. How is he different on Fridays? Friday Tucker is just really lame. Um, he usually he pre tapes a lot of his shows because he doesn't want to get a guest host because he wants to be on camera. So he'll pre tape his shows sometimes, especially for Fridays. And it'll be just the dumbest stories you've ever heard like he had uh, this guy called the egg hustler who was like selling black market eggs or something and then 
a guy who said he was arrested because he knew what was at Area 51. That was in the same episode. That's Friday, Tucker. Okay. Um, and then sometimes if there's been a lot of news over the week, he goes live, but he just loses it. He gets so mad. So it's just entirely unhinged. Um, so Friday Tucker is a specific brand of Tucker. Usually it's more on the boring side, but when it's not, it's off the walls. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's, you think it's he's just mad time. that he has to stay at work? When he's, yeah, I mean, he's mad yeah. that he has to stay at work in his house in Maine, where he had them build a studio. Or he's pre-taping it with stuff that he knows that the news cycle won't affect one way or another. Yeah, exactly. So he wants a three-day weekend. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And, and he doesn't, doesn't want to have mad. someone else co-host or like yeah. guest host for him. Right. And, you know, sometimes he'll like do it live and then still not address any of the news from the day, which is also... Weird. Incredible, Weird. impressive almost at this point, how he can just <laughs> not talk about any of it. Yeah. He's Pat Sajeking the whole thing. It's very interesting. <laughs> um, okay. Anything else? Kat, you want to tell us about Fox? And because, yes, I'm sorry, this too, Greg. I am celebrating today. I started celebrating with this indictment. I'm going to celebrate with every single consequence that finally comes for this criminal that was put into the office because he crimed his way in, crimed his way through it, and crimed his way on the uh, on his way out. I'm going to celebrate all that. I'm also going to have shade and fraud, and without any shame, over these people who knew better, who admittedly in court documents cannot stand this person, who are on tape. They knew how bad he was. They knew he was a liar. They knew everything about him. They knew January six. They knew everything. Everything. And they went forward and did his propaganda. So I'm I'm having incredible shot and fraud over them. I, and I I don't care. Let them let them cry, let them cry. I think that's performance art for the audience. But where there's real pain and suffering happening over there at Fox, good. <laughs> I'm with good. you on that. I am absolutely with you. You didn't say anything yeah. that. I mean, yeah, it's super satisfying. This is all incredibly satisfying to watch. Um, I have been up since six looking at Fox and um, oh my God, Kat. it's, it's extreme. At least it's been entertaining. Like it's been enjoyable. It's just one of those stories that as someone who watches Fox professionally, it's fun. Everyone on my team, we've just been sending each other memes constantly <laughs> And you don't want to take a break because you're overwhelmed. You want to take a break because you know you're about to like go too hard. Um, so yeah, I, I am right there strength. with you. All right. Okay, good. We'll Who take was the your... saddest? Was Jesse Waters the saddest? Lindsey Graham. I, I mean, like, I know he's not employed by Fox, but if you watch that clip of him, I think Asen has it on his Twitter. Um, I like he has tears in his eyes. They're like red rimmed. It's the face of a man who knows he backed the wrong horse. Um, yeah, and it's just so sad. We have a great tradition in this country of um, Southern senators who are a little bit on the sauce. And to that, I have a little sip, <laughs> yes. to Lindsay. Yeah, because that's always going on with him. All right, should we jump into it? Are you going to stick around with us, Kat? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I also didn't yeah. have any seltzers in my fridge, so I'm just I just have water. Okay, water's fine. I, I normally do it's water, sad. but not tonight. Yeah, yeah. So we're good. Yeah. All right, let's go into our next segment. Are you ready, Greg? I'm ready. Here we go. Okay, it's segment number four. It's Return of the Returns. Um, so Twitter has been acting like weird lately. I don't know if people have noticed. Like, apparently they have a new owner and things are haywire. And um, so what happens is periodically I'll get like a notification that someone's liked something from four years ago that I forgot that I even wrote. And that happened uh, over the weekend where I had done this like Harper's Index style thing when that uh, article came out in 2020. Um, Suzanne Craig and the others at the at the New York Times talking about Trump's tax returns and doing that analysis of 15 years of his returns. And, you know, I went through it and there was all this stuff and some of it was, you know, it looked like things were going to get resolved, like kind of like now. So I went back and reread the article and try to put, you know, the calendar on it and be like, oh, this is stuff that's happening now. And what I determined is, um, I didn't, it says it in the article, there's a big IRS kind of dispute going on because in 20, uh, hold on, I have this on the, on the next page of my notes. I don't want to get it wrong. In 2009, he declared losses of $700 million 
as one does. Um, and the reason he was able to do this is because the tax code changed in some way. Obama, ironically, is the one who changed the tax code that allowed him to suddenly be able to cumulatively do losses going back for 10 years or whatever it was. So the IRS cut him a check for $72.9 million as a refund, as a tax refund, because of this $700 million in losses he declared in one year on his returns. Now, when you did, they pay him, but they audit it. They make sure that it's okay. So per the article, again, this is a while. This is two and a half years ago now that the article came out. They've been arbitrating this. And I tried to do research and it has not been resolved yet, as far as I can tell. Um, even though a couple of months ago, the AP did a report. And according to that report, it was still in process. So at some point... The IRS audit that he keeps talking about and hinting at, I think, is really this one particular thing where this very small committee of people is going to determine whether or not he was, in fact, eligible to write off $700 million. In wow. losses. And if he is not, he is going to owe the government with interest something on the order of one hundred and one hundred and two million dollars which you know as my boss likes to say that's real money uh you know i know that he's made a lot of money on his fundraising off all this bullshit i think that's yeah. why he said i'm gonna get indicted on tuesday because he just needed you know, it, it's like somebody on Substack being like, you need to please support my page now because you know blah 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 that's that's yeah. the same thing right yeah. but he made a couple million dollars by these guys. I mean, how much more money can these people fucking have? They spent it all on on fuck Biden flags and staples to staple it to the tree in front of their house. A um, hundred and whatever million. That's a lot of money. So uh, this tax thing, if it if it falls that way, could absolutely ruin him. And weirdly, after I published this on Tuesday, like a couple hours later, he was writing about the IRS and complaining about it on Truth Social. So, like I had a deal. The IRS gave me a deal. I, I want the old deal. Why do I have to have the new deal? Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, God knows what he's really thinking. But I, having it at fresh in my mind, I'm looking at it like, oh, my God, he's talking about this thing. Maybe we're going to get some resolution with this. So yeah. now if if he has to pay a hundred million dollars to the government at the same time that he has to hire lawyers everywhere. Wow. I don't know. That's not going to be so great. And um, and if he can't pay, I don't know. That's like, you know, you got to pay your taxes. I think it's pretty sure it's not lawful to not do that. I, I'm not a lawyer, but um, so I, I think it's very interesting. I think it's something to keep an eye on. Something else in the article that they mentioned was that he personally um, backed guaranteed loans, you know, for himself totaling something like $400 million. And yeah. they were like, that will be due in the next three to four years. Well, this is this article is two and a half years old. So that means, yeah. you know, Piper must be paid. So it looks like this guy is driving very, very fast into a brick wall of the kind that he was never able to build on the Southern border. That's what I got. That's a good rundown. Yeah. What do you think, Kat? What do you think? You, if, uh, they're not bothered at all on the on the Fox side about his taxes and his money or anything. It's all a witch hunt, right? Yeah, no. Um, actually, some hosts said that, you know, like he should actually be commended because he was smart enough to find loopholes, um, which is a really fun way to spin it. Or they'll say he's just being a good business person. Those are all um, his lines. He's feeding them. Yeah. He's sending them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Text. Yeah. Yeah, and they're like, he's such a good business person. He's committing fraud. Who hasn't done that? Who hasn't given hush money payments to a porn star? Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's just, you know, living in denial. Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't want to owe a hundred million dollars to the government though, but that's just me. How do you keep up with that if you haven't absorbed for your job all of the garbage? Do you have, do you spend extra hours, you know, off of that catching up? to know what the garbage is or you just assume it's garbage yeah it's kind yeah. of simultaneous once you yeah. do this for a while you can watch a fox story and kind of figure out what the actual story is based on how they say things and like different phrases they use so you can yeah. watch something and be like okay i know that's not true i know that's not true and then after the episode go look up an actual news source and then all of it will be true like you'll be able to pick out those things that you saw originally um it's a useless talent in any other context, but it's one that you develop in this job. Yeah. And, you know, look, I hope that 
there's a comeuppance just personally for him. There needs to be something about all of the lying. I don't, you know, it is on New York to bring all of that. Uh, if we're not going to get a federal thing from the IRS if, with consequences, you know, where there's bank fraud, where there's wire fraud, anything going through the banks, it, it's going, it would be going through New York and it would be that same office bringing those charges, which we know were all of the charges that were on the table. And then the Stormy Daniels thing was what um, Pomerantz called the uh, zombie thing, right? That So Brad came and got rid of all of the, of the Al Capone level crimes, right? Of the, of the mobster crimes and focused on the dirty politician crime. And maybe that'll work. Um, as but, far as we know. Uh, yeah. There's a re the, the follow the money did come out of uh, Elmer Irie and, what the what the what the T men did to take down with Elizabeth Friedman to take down Capone. It wasn't, you know, as I've said many times, everyone hears me say this, it was not the people you think it was. It wasn't Hoover. It wasn't any, it wasn't any of that. Um, it was literally the IRS, which eventually became FinCEN within them, and their uh, intelligence investigative unit that was put together by a woman named Elizabeth Friedman, who was the first person to create. Uh, cryptanalysis and that little division that crossed six different uh, law enforcement agencies at the time, specifically to hunt down the money behind Al Capone and the boot bootlegging, that grew up to become the National Security Agency. So that's how that, all of what's interesting about this is, whether it's Greg and I saying, oh my God, it's a simulation, is that at the origin of our greatest intelligence agency um, and all of these sort of pop culture things, references, and law enforcement's understanding of how to take criminals down is to follow the money to where it ends up in a Watergate movie about, you know, with Robert Redford about, about Nixon, the, the big corrupt president uh, before Trump, all with the same operatives around him, Roger Stone and everything, all of that comes back to this Capone case. Everything comes back to that. Um, so it's interesting that it's, what Donald's facing is what the gangsters before him actually um, taught law enforcement uh, to uh, to perform, how they taught them how to actually do their jobs by, That's being, crazy. by being so great at hiding their money in LLCs and offshores and whatnot. That's it. It's interesting how it all originated with that, but it did. Wow. It that's did. so interesting. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we'll get more into the history in the next segment. Do you want we're we're our time's up on this? Do you want to get into announcements, Greg, or what do you want to we do? We can get into announcements. We have a couple right. of announcements. Uh, we do this, Cat. We have a little s section here where we tell everybody what's happening, which is basically just the same stuff over and over again. But now there's new things because Trump is indicted. So we're yeah. gonna so, sell it. Um, yeah. Okay, so please subscribe. If you don't subscribe, please please join and become a member. Um, you know, we're getting indicted on Tuesday. So if you could join and be a member, that would be great. Uh, great. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Uh, and thank you to everybody who has. Uh, you know, it, it, it's such a great community here. and We appreciate you all very much. And, and uh, you know, it's always super fun to come here Friday night and see everybody in the comments and, and chats and all this stuff. And we get such nice notes from people during the week. And we, you know, we appreciate you. Um, let's see, stickers. We're taking next week off. Uh, just cause the holidays. it's the holidays and yeah. uh, it seems like a logical week to take off. So we will not be there. We'll be back on April 14th, Friday, April 14th. We will do an after hours on the 14th. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, X. Oh, right. That, um, it's, uh, today was trans day of visibility. So we're going to shout mm -hmm. out to, uh, the trans community, which as you know, on the show, we, we support, uh, wholeheartedly okay. and try to, you know, shed light on that. We were going to talk about, uh, the Nashville stuff, and I think we're going to wait and do that in two weeks. It yeah. needs to be addressed, but uh, you know, we uh, we feel sad by it, and for a variety of reasons, there's a lot to unpack there. But we wanted to talk about the indictment today. We needed a little we needed a little break from all the horror, um, but we do want to acknowledge uh, Trans Day of Visibility, uh, and then yeah, we have this. We have the the Ricky Vaughn. Ricky Vaughn is is guilty. Ricky Vaughn is guilty. <clears throat> Microchip ra slash Radio Shack, as I call him, I think was the nail in the coffin that put him away. Um, mm -hmm. And all of that, all of it is thanks to our dear friend, the stellar, incredible, independent journalist, rock star, Luke O'Brien. Um, yay, Luke O'Brien. Big shout out to Luke O'Brien. Um, and I think there's going to be some, uh, some pretty prominent 
trolls, uh, you know, chaos agents in trouble from this. And we'll just see how that continues to roll out. Again, I have a very personal invested interest in shade and fraud in this particular story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, it, we're, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled for Luke. I'm thrilled to know that the, the fourth estate, when done with integrity and persistence and correctly, um, can actually do something like bring justice. Here's for everybody who doesn't know what we're talking about. And I know our audience is pretty dialed in on all this. This was a man who actually interfered with the election in 2016 to the degree that he set up um, uh, sort of fake phone numbers for people to call targeting the African-American community in very specific districts and swung votes saying, call this number, that's your vote. That's a crime. You can't do that. And it, it, it is demonstrably proven that he actually robbed these uh, the targeted people, that he, people he targeted of their vote and robbed all of us quite possibly of a Hillary Clinton presidency because there were several of these operations that were going down. So you'll hear on Fox News that, oh, his free speech, he just did memes. Well, that's about as, as authentic as Jared Kushner saying, I don't know why for a few Facebook ads, they were, they're saying there was Russian interference. This is, the, all these people really did run a massive racket. They committed crimes to get Trump into the office. And this guy with the troll king and troll lord of all troll lords over him and directing him and telling him what to do it and identifying his talent for specifically targeting black Americans, that was Radio Shack, Microchip, his boss. That motherfucker um, is turning everybody in now. So we're going to hope that there's even bigger things coming this way. But it all, all of it is because of Luke O'Brien's stellar reporting. Yeah. So yay, journalism. That's our announcement. Yay. So, journalism. Kat, are they talking about this on Fox News? Yeah, it was Tucker's opening story tonight. He loves to say that it, like it's just memes. Um, I don't think they realize how easy it is. Or maybe they do and they just don't acknowledge it. Um, how often these guys turn on each other. There's absolutely like no <laughs> solidarity with far right people at Imagine all. That. They will turn on a dime. Um, and that's, you know, the case and then try to reinvent people. themselves. Yeah. And then yeah. say, mm. yeah, it's all, it's all horseshit, all of yeah. it. Yeah. it. It's all horseshit. It's so stupid. And, uh, you know, they do all these dangerous things and they can go under the guise of, oh, I was just joking, whatever. Yeah. Or I'm just asking questions. Oh, my God, I'm so sick of it. Uh, but yeah, that's what they're talking about. But mostly it's Tucker that's focused on it, just like he was focused on the QAnon shaman, because apparently that's all that happened that day. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so he just has a laser focus. It might be interesting to see how tightly he is wired in to the meme lords. Um, I think coming out of Daily Caller, coming out of all these other sort of far right, um, uh, you know, troll, turned into troll factories, right? That Tucker had his hand in one way or another. Uh, so he knows all these people. That's why. <laughs> yeah, he spread a um, 4chan related conspiracy theory this week on his show about trans oh. people and the trans day of vengeance. And it was yeah. a tweet linked to a 4chan related account that was basically a 4chan meme originally adjusted yeah. to say to like kill Christ cucks and roundhouse kick Christ cucks, uh, which he read verbatim on the air. But yeah, so he he amplifies 4chan a lot. He loves all yeah. these guys. Yeah, he likes it. Or at least his okay. writers do. Um, all right. One one yeah. last thing about, about Mackie. You know, he went by Ricky Vaughn. Um, that was his Twitter name. And for people that don't know, Ricky Vaughn is the Charlie Sheen character in Major League. And um, in hindsight, should have seen this coming because Ricky Vaughn did pitch in the California Penal League in the movie. So, you know, now you're a felon too, just like the real Ricky Vaughn, motherfucker. Guilty! Okay. Uh, oh my God. I we think have we have a sponsor. Special. Do we have, we a, have sponsor? a new sponsor? We have, we have two. We have a, another sponsor tonight. We, we have, have a new sponsor, two. Greg. That's crazy. Oh my God. This is what um, a wonderful thing. This is like the show before the break. It's like a, a present from, from the, uh, the Easter bunny or the, the chunk maybe. I suppose. The chunkle. In this case. Yeah. And now a word from our sponsor. What's up, everybody? This is Joey Tacos. Joey Tacos. 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 Ladies, do you need fast, easy cash? Cash. 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 What most people think you're a dish. 
Now's your chance to join this amazing program. You see, Mr. Trump is sitting on loads of money. They want you to have it, so come and get it. It doesn't matter if you had anything to do with him. Consensual relations, shook his hand, took a picture with him, it doesn't matter. He's just gonna give you money because he apparently doesn't want to embarrass his family. So come get this money. Go 1555 Tacos for a free consultation or submit your photo and application to www.4seasonstotalshutching.net.ru. My team and I will review your goods and get back with you ASAP. But don't listen to me, listen to these real, totally real people. I got $150,000 that I never even touched. I had multiple love children with Okay, well, we don't have to listen to her. Go 1555 tacos. Cash, cash, cash. Get fake laid. Get paid. 1555 tacos. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. I can't. <laughs> oh my God. I love him so much. I love Chuck. Okay. He's great. He's um, great. So, okay. So, Kat, we got one more segment. You going to stick around or you got you to gotta go? No, I am here. You're good. All right. Here we go. Just checking. Okay. Um, okay. LB, we're on the clock. We're on the clock. This is good, guys. This is this gather is round good. time of it's a little history gather lesson. Gather round for history level. Yeah. yeah so, if um, this is what I want everybody to know and be prepared for and use your Twitter for anytime you hear anyone go, it's unprecedented. It's unprecedented in terms of what's happening to Donald. Um, there are some very specific parts of this story and how it might roll out that actually are incredibly precedented. So I wanted to give those to you on the show. I've done a little on Twitter. I'll do a little more. It's all also in the world beneath and I'll, point you to sort of the episode where you can get the mother load for that. So this thing with Ron DeSantis, we're going to start there. And I noticed this when Ron tweeted the, his, or put his post, whatever the hell he was doing, saying, you know, we're not, I'm not going to go for, get involved in a George Soros back prosecutor, blah, 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 with this thing. We're just going to stay out of it. Well, everybody was like, oh, he's throwing Donald under the bus. No, no, no. <laughs> I read that right. And it's happening. He was saying he's not going to participate in his role in that. And a governor has a very specific role when another state is coming for one of their residents. They, they can deny extradition. Now, there's, and if, the, if Donna wants to stay at Mar-a-Lago and says, just come get me, Alvin Bragg and his team cannot come in there without Ron DeSantis letting them in. This is how it goes, everybody. So I understand that legal Twitter is all saying that's not real that can't happen that's not the way things go da, 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 da. article 4 well, article 4 article, article 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 article. Article. they've been doing shit like that the whole time guys when has that ever stopped donald from doing the stuff that they say he can't do he just does it and then the whole system goes into this you know you have to almost chest compress it because everybody's heads are blown off because they're like well what do we do what do we do oh no he hasn't no all ron DeSantis has to say is no i actually don't have to do this and then they wait out the process to see if they're going to be forced into something by a higher power maybe another court and we'll see what happens this this is probably what's going to happen and it is precedented it's precedented not in the realm of politics but in the realm of organized crime so back in the 1930s Lucky, there was a case in um, in New York, and it was the it was like kind of what you're seeing happening in New York right now with Alvin Bragg saying wanting all these police officers out, calling others all out because he knows there's going to be a, a, a scene, and he wants New York safe, um, and the mayor is engaging in all that, and they're all like, okay, get the policemen out. Um, that happened on a very cold February night, I think it was 1934, in Manhattan. And the police had no idea what they were, why they were out, because th so many of them were corrupt and on the take. And the the mayor and a special prosecutor, by the way, uh, and uh, the governor were all keeping it quiet who the special prosecutor was after. This The special prosecutor at that time was a man by the name of Thomas Dewey, who would go on to become the governor of New York. At this time, he was a prosecutor. And they had... Oh, God, 1,500 
uh, police officers out on the street. It was like crazy. And they were all waiting on street corners for a bus that was going to happen all at once. At, in the, with, when they got the call, it was like, go in, bus this stuff. What they were there to do was to raid brothels and to raid uh, uh, middlemen and to raid politicians' homes and to raid that they knew were Johns. So it was all tied to taking down a prostitution ring that was highly coordinated and has sort of ha in the city, right? The biggest prostitution ring in the city and it had legs in Chicago as well. Same racket. Who they were after by busting this prosecution ring was the capo de tutti capo, the boss of all bosses, the original OG gangster of all gangsters, Lucky Luciano. So this was how Lucky Luciano went down. He went down for prostitution and racketeering, even though they didn't have the name for racketeering at the time, but the crimes were coordination around this prostitution ring and running this prostitution ring. And what did Lucky do right after this raid and the indictment came down on him? He ran to Arkansas. <laughs> he holed up in Arkansas because they had the governor, he and, and Meyer Lansky had the governor of Arkansas in their pocket. They owned him. So that governor, when Thomas Dewey was like, okay, we've got our guy. We've done the raid. We've got the brothels. Here's the indictments. Special counsel's coming. We want this guy. The governor of Arkansas said, no, I'm not turning him over. So there was a big struggle in the courts. There was all this back and forth. Lucky was holed up in, in Arkansas. He should have left the country, but he didn't. He stayed there. Eventually, the governor of Arkansas was forced by the courts to turn Lucky Luciano over to Thomas Dewey. And that became, quite frankly, the biggest circus of any public trial. They had it in like a an arena that they had at the time. They couldn't fit everybody in the courthouse. It was such a scene, this, this trial right of, of Lucky. And he was convicted and he went to prison. And while in prison, he then realized he had some, he had to play this to get out. It was like, how is he going to get out of there? Because Thomas Dewey, by putting him away, um, had a big, no, had notoriety, right? And he was going to run for governor. And Lucky knew he was going to run for governor. So Lucky did a whole thing with Meyer Lansky. You can listen to my show. They started doing fifth column shit because a war was coming and, and uh, agitated a lot of stuff around the docks. And they were responsible for kind of burning shit down and saying, well, we can help you figure out who did that. And cut a deal with Thomas Dewey because he had become governor by this time so that Lucky could get out. He needed this governor, right? So the very man who put him in he cut a deal with when it came to national security in a time of war in order to get out of prison. He was immediately extradited to Italy. Now, how did he know how to do that? Well, if we wind back the clock to 1932, but at that point in time, because of the racket that Lucky had actually inherited and that he and, and, and Meyer built, they had about 80 politicians across the country that they had put into office. They're at the uh, 1932 Democratic National Convention, and the the there were several buyers for the Democrat top of the Democrat ticket to get into to get on into the nomination and eventually get into office. And it looked like the mobsters, right? The Tammany Hall. These were folks out of Tammany Hall. It looked like the mobsters were going to put somebody else at the top of the ticket, and so the man who really wanted the deal, the job, really badly, cut a deal with Lucky. This is all documented, you guys. I am not making this up. It's in many biographies and in many books. Cut a deal with Lucky Luciano and got himself at the top of that ticket. Then once he became president, because he did, and he was back in the deal that he cut with Lucky, Lucky said, I'm going to probably get nabbed, right? In a couple of years, I'm going to need you. They're investigating me for organized crime. They want to get me. They eventually did get him and took him down for the prostitution ring. But he said to to this candidate, if you're still the governor of New York, I want you to pardon me. I want you to stop this prosecutor and I want you to make sure I get out of there. And this politician said, you got it. No problem. Right. Got the nominate, got lucky to back him from the nomination, got into office, became our president, and then fucked Lucky Luciano and let Thomas Dewey take that motherfucker down. And Lucky was so shocked by that shiv, he wrote about it nonstop. 
And he came up with a summary. Greg, you read this on The World Beneath. I it's did. Like, I guess you shouldn't. He never thought a, a politician would do that. It's like, this is what gangsters do, man. This guy out gangstered me. I never thought a politician would do something like that. Like what we do to one another. Right? But, it, you know, especially someone running for president. But I guess no one should believe anybody who ri or trust anyone who rides in the offices of the presidency on the back of a gangster. That's his quote. And the president he was talking about was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay? So there's all kinds of precedent for people getting into office by shaking hands and taking deals with organized crime, by organized criminals getting into office. We can go into Nixon's history at some point. That man was as dirty as they come. He was owned by Mickey Cohen, owned by Mickey Cohen. Okay? He was in those rackets. He was. So we, we've had gangsters in there. We've had politicians that got in there because of deals with organized crime. We've had criminals. None of that is unprecedented. What's precedent is the degree of crimes that Donald committed going into office, while in office, and getting out of office, and the history of organized crime that nobody was willing to really talk about and report on and make sure the American public knew, except for the people here on this, on this show right here, right? So- and maybe it'll become fashionable now that he's, you know, clearly the gangster in chief uh, or the former gangster in chief. Uh, I don't know. I just know <laughs> that of all of the people to give us the words of wisdom and of all of the people who have gone through what Donald Trump is facing now and the kind of shit he's going to try to pull. Right. It's for have it be lucky Luciano kind of blows my mind. It kind of blows my mind. Yeah. So that's the history there. We're, we're going into precedented territory. If you want to know how to, this is why I've always had a good number on this guy, is I never looked at him as a politician. I never looked at him as a celebrity. I never considered him or calculated what he, what he had done, what he would do as sort of like a businessman, a, you know, a real estate guy. He's a gangster. He was raised by gangster. He was raised at the knee of fat Tony Salerno and Paul Castellano and their boss, Roy Cohn, who put all the deals together. And his dad, who was the business front for the whole fucking thing that he inherited. And guess who those guys, guess who gave Paul Castellano his position as head of the Gambino crime family? Fucking lucky Luciano. I was going to guess FDR. Not FDR. <laughs> so the other lesson in that is for all the people that have been around Donald and profited off of him and used him to get to, the, to advance themselves and to get power for themselves, you know, you can be FDR. You can fuck him. Just screw him over. There's a tiny little pecker that went into a courthouse that I think is the one that screwed him over on this indictment that he's got right now, Mr. Pecker. You don't even have to be named Pecker. You don't have to be a porn star. You know, you can be someone who has your job or your position or whatever you have because this guy either had leverage on you or he made a promise to you, Lindsey Graham. You can still be FDR. I don't know. When it comes to Trump, I think, you know, historically speaking, uh, things usually take a bad turn whenever the pecker is whipped out. I think that's usually what happens. So I think he's he's doomed here. Um Going back to that riveting tale, LB, I mean, I, did people just not know about this Article 4? I mean, maybe if they knew, maybe if there was a legal Twitter, <sighs> that whole thing wouldn't have happened. Do you think? Maybe. <laughs> he's going to he's going to do he's going to do shit that is everybody's saying he can't do. He's going to do it. Right. If he if he decides it's to his benefit, he's going to make a lot of money or somehow you know, be able to play his part in a stronger way to strut into the, into the court, to strut into the, wherever he goes to get fingerprinted um, and get his mug shot. He'll do that. He'll do whatever works for him. Yeah. But don't think that Ron DeSantis, it, it, Ron DeSantis will take his time. He'll take his goddamn time. And probably what he'll, he's negotiating is you're going to back me for president. 
right? Because I'm going to make you look good and look safe. And I'm going to fucking pardon you is what's going to happen. I'll pardon you. That's all he he cares about. Yeah, just like Thomas Dewey. Okay, so I know now you have a hard out tonight. I do have a hard out. What's our time? You have a hard out in like two minutes. So we should end with this. Okay, so Kat, I'm going to ask you a question here because LB and I have a bet. And the bet is one beer. I bet that, uh, well, she bets that once you know, push comes to shove, Trump is going to flee. He's going to leave the country and that's going to be the end of him. And I think that he will never do that because he's a coward who can't deal with a place where the ketchup tastes weird and he's not near his omelet station. So do you think he's going to flee or do you think he's going to stick around and and see what happens? What do you think? Fake music. I think he's sticking around. I think he's too proud to leave. I think that he thinks it would make him look like a coward. And also, he, you're right. He's scared of the weird ketchup. What would he do without overcooked steaks? If he went to France and stayed in France, he would die. <laughs> he would starve to death. <laughs> yeah, no, he's staying. And he'll try to stay right. in Florida as long as he can, unless he goes to New York. I'm really interested to see what happens on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited for our T-shirts. Let's get our T-shirts and our mugs and our stickers ready. I want the mug. I, I I want the mug shot, but I also I don't want to look at the mug shot. I'm kind of like tired of looking at his fucking ugly, stupid face. Is that okay? Is it okay to? I'm glad that the mug shot exists, but I don't want to look at it all the time. What if we superimpose a rat? You know, my son does have two pet rats that are very cute. Okay. Well, then yeah. don't do that to the rats. Yeah, it's <laughs> not mean fair. To the rats. Well, the rats haven't done anything. Rats. Yeah. Oh, they eat half man. a grape. They're just like, oh, look at the look at the delicious half a grape. Um, I stay away from them because um, they're, you know, rats. Uh, not my jam, really, so much. Um, so, OK, so Kat, where can we find you? I know you're, you're all over the place. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Uh, my Twitter is Abagazali Cat. My YouTube is Cat M Abu. So is my TikTok. If you go on any of those sites, you'll find the link to all my other stuff. Awesome. I'm going to put it up here because I'm sure we have a wonderful audience. I'm sure they're posting what it is. So when I yeah. find it, I'll throw it up there. So I'm sure everybody follows there. you already, but yeah, the, just, just, in, just in case they don't, you know, we, we want to get that out there. Okay. So, you know, we're, we're now, we're going to be out for two weeks. Kat, we want to say thank you so much for joining us. It was a lot of fun. Um, thanks for bringing us the knowledge about what, what's going on um, on the evil side of the, uh, of the world there uh, in, in, in bizarro newsland. Um, we want to thank everybody for watching and the great comments. And, uh, you know, as always, this has been a great show. It's, you know, look, we've had a lot of terrible, terrible shit happen uh, nationally, globally in the last three, four, five, six, seven, seven years. Mm. So every time something nice happens, I think it is important to like breathe it in and, and appreciate it. And uh, my first thought you asked this was, you know, what were you, th- what were you doing? What I was thinking was, I can't believe this just happened. I really can't believe it just happened. I did not think that it would happen. I I thought maybe down the line, but I certainly didn't think it was going to happen this week. In fact, I had to edit my podcast intro and edit out the joke that I made about it not happening. So I was, I was that sure that it wasn't going to happen. So the fact that it happened, I think is a great, uh, it's an, uh, it augurs good things to come hopefully down the line. And, uh, and the fact that we're going to be gone for a week means that even better things are going to happen next week. Yes. Sure. Whenever you take a break, big stuff happens. So we'll look yeah. forward to that, to that um, karma coming in. Yeah, Can't so. wait. Can't All wait. Right. Th- thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. We'll talk Bye, to you everybody. in two weeks. Thanks, Kat. Bye.